بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد. Okay, we have very limited time to answer as many questions as possible because I have to leave in good time to be able to prepare for my early travel tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, okay. Uh, First question is in regard to some a father who travels a lot uh, in dawah, making dawah, as he says, in different places around the world. Is this good for the children? And the answer, we have seen people like this who neglect their families and their children, and they go for extended periods of time, uh, saying that they are calling other people to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we know, that the greatest obligation a person, have, a person has is to guide his children before and his family before anybody else. As the Prophet Sallallahu said that it is a great, there is no great sin as for a person to neglect those whom he is supposed to provide for. And neglecting them would be by not providing the food and the sustenance, the material sustenance for them. And more importantly, by not providing for them the education they need. So what's the benefit of guiding somebody in uh, China or South America when our children at home are not guided and we do not do much to guide them? So, so that's my answer for this question. Is it correct that we judge and blame the parents if teenagers are going to nightclubs girlfriend, boyfriends, etc., and the parents don't know, but the community uh, are aware, the, the obligation of the parents is to raise their children, and this is something that I missed to mention during the lecture, so this question is good in that it highlights an, an, an important point relevant to the lecture, which is that uh, it is our obligation to raise our children upon the teachings of Islam from the age of seven. From, starting from the age of seven. Allah Azza wa gave us as example prayer. Prayer is the highest obligation for a Muslim. And the Prophet Wasallam told us to command them to, to pray starting from the age of seven and to enforce it on them from the age of 10, at the age of 10. So at the age of seven, the children are still not responsible for their deeds, but we are responsible to teach them and educate them. And this starts, this process of teaching and educating starts in Islam to be serious, a serious responsibility for the parents from the age of seven. And it becomes more stressed at the age of 10. Becomes more stressed at the age of 10. Okay? Allah Azza wa Jalla, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the prayer as an example, because as I said, it's the most important obligation, but the same applies to any other obligation in Islam. Yani every obligation, uh, fasting, Hijab for girls, uh, paying zakah if the kids have money and they know how to deal with the money. Uh, uh, being yani, uh, responsible for the words they say, staying away from saying bad words and uh, avoiding lying, etc. All of the good deeds, the kids should, be, should start being trained on them from the age of seven. 
So, and by the age of 10, they would be, yani this is three years, that enabled them to become acquainted and used to performing those obligations. Of those future obligations, there'll be obligations for them in the future. I hear some people talking here. No, other than that, I think there are people here talking. Please do not distract other people and keep the babysitting door closed, please. Please close the door. Okay, so we start tra training them from seven so that by the, by the age of 10, they are used to, to the obligations or to, or to their future obligations. And so that by the age of pu puberty, for sure, it becomes a very easy thing for them to perform those obligations by the age of puberty. So and when they reach 12, 13 for girls, 14, 15 for boys, and they attain puberty, خلاص. Yani their obligations are part of their life, of their normal life. Okay? So, so this applies, as I said, to all obligations and even to the recommended acts of worship. Now, there are parents, and maybe this question is talking about them. There are parents who do not teach their children or guide them at all until they reach puberty. I, I know parents who I ask them, why don't you ask your daughter to cover herself? And they say she's still too young when she is about 11 or 12. And I say, what do you mean too young? Are you waiting for her to reach puberty? That would be too late. Because when she reaches puberty and you tell her to cover, she says, I'm not gonna cover. She's not used to it, but when she starts from the age of seven, and then continues until 10, until puberty, خلاص, it, beca it becomes a natural trait, part of her uh, life and being, as I said. So when you see the teenagers going astray, going to nightclubs, taking boyfriends and girlfriends and so on, then remember that you neglected to, 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 to command them to be to follow Islam properly when they were young. So how do you expect them to listen to you when they are older? It's too late. Like you know, you have a tree, and when it is young, it starts to bend, to go, bend instead of being straight. So you say, I'll fix it later, I'll fix it later, I'll fix it later. Then when it becomes very hard, very well rooted, you try to straighten it, خلاص, it's too late. How can you straighten it now? The only way that you can straighten it now is by breaking it. So the only way you can straighten your kids then, after they have grown into yani the, their late teenage years, is to break them, to get rid of them. Tell them, get out, come out, leave my house. So you lose your children by neglecting them when they are young. By neglecting what Allah commanded you and His Prophet وسلم, commanded you to do in regard to them. Okay, so education in Islam starts early. It starts from the age of seven or before. And yeah, before the age of seven, you recommend to them. Yani yeah, your son, you take him with you to the masjid, you, he, you pray, he sees you pray, you pray next to you and so on, but there's no obligation. And I have tried this with my kids personally, Yani. Yeah. Uh, they all know that when they are seven, they will start praying regularly. So when they are before seven, they say, I'm not seven yet. I can, if you tell them, come pray with me, he says, I'm not seven yet. I pray when I like. So they pray sometimes, sometimes they don't pray. And the girls, she says, I'm not seven, I'm not gonna cover yet. But when they are seven, in the morning I see my daughters come out from their room with the hijab, خلاص, now they, they are seven. They know that it is the time for them to apply the obligations of Islam. After that, even though it's not an obligation on them yet, but they start getting used from the age of seven. And my daughter, I remember my oldest daughter, I told her, now you are seven, you have to start getting used for hijab. So when you go to school, 
try to keep it part of the time. So one day maybe put it, the other day if you, if you feel you are too embarrassed, don't put it, and so on the third day, until it becomes a habit for you over the period of a few weeks. But she said, no, I'm going to put it and khalas. Once I put it, I'm not going to remove it. And that's what she did, subhanAllah, from the age of seven. So they can do it. They can do it, and we have to help them with this. So this is from neglect usually. There are kids who are bad even though you, you work on them hard from their, uh, from their early years, but these are the exceptional cases. Otherwise, it is the neglect of the parents that lead to their children's deviation. So what you need to do is ask Allah for forgiveness and, and yani, advise your children. If you do not want to disown them, at least advise them and try to find some good friends for them that will be able to lead them back to the right path. Uh, my husband can make time for him two times a day to be in the mosque every day, but making a time to talk to the children is one thing I have to make. Uh, what will you say? Yani, it is important that the pa both parents have time to talk to the children, because the children will look at what they hear from their, par from their father, different from what they hear from their mother. This will have some value for them, some emotional value. And this will have some serious value, what they hear from their father. So, so do not neglect your job as a father to talk to your children. As, as I said, even if you read one hadith, how long does it take to read a hadith? Yani a short hadith, one line, two lines, doesn't take even five minutes with the explanation. So make it a habit to read one hadith with your children every day and you see, you will see insha'Allah the great effect that will, this will have on your children on the long run. My children don't wake up for Fajr. What should I do? They are good uh, Muslims but are too tired to pray. This normally is because the children spend too much time on TV or on, on the computer. So, yani our, our practice at home is to, to try normally to lock the room where the computers are around 10 o'clock at night. And we have no TV at home, alhamdulillah. So after 10, it's up to them what they do with the rest of their time if they want to stay awake. They can go and read a book or whatever, but they know they have to wake up for Fajr. So you need to control their time so that they do not stay up too late. And do not let them have late dinner, because if they have late dinner, then they will stay up late until they digest it partially at least. And this will give them an excuse to read and play and uh, whatever, until it's, t it's uh, time for them to go to sleep. At what age should we segregate our children between boys and girls? The same hadith that I mentioned earlier that says, command your children to pray at the age of seven and uh, enforce it on them at the age of 10. And it says separate between them in their sleep, which means separate the boys from the girls in sleep from the age of 10. And as we know, at the age of 10, most likely the kids have not reached pu puberty. Yani, except in very, very exceptional cases in the world, this is prior to puberty. And yet, Islam tells us that from that age, they, they should be separated in their sleeping places. Uh, some people ask, this is not yani, asked here, but this reminds me of another question, which is, uh, when do we... When do women cover from young boys? When do they start covering from young boys? And some say at the age of puberty, which is true, yani, when the young boys start to uh, yani, think about the women in a way that, in a, with desire, 
that normally will not start before the age of puberty, except in six societies as in the modern times that we live in. But normally, they don't start before the age of puberty. But the answer actually is you start from the age of seven and you make it rigid from the age of ten. Yeah, and from the age of seven, you start not allowing kids much among women, boys among women. But by the age of ten, خلاص. Just as you separated between children and their sleeping, also you, you separate boys from women. You do not allow a boy to go, for example, into the presence, into a room where women are not covered. Okay? So the age of 10, same thing. Allahu alam. Because how do you know that the boy has reached puberty or not? People say until they reach puberty, okay. Some, some boys reach puberty at the age of 11, some at the age of 12, some 13, some 14, some 15, some 16. One of my boys, I know he did not reach puberty until he was 15 and a half. So how do you know which a, what is the age of puberty? This is the correct answer. You need a, uh, a well-known, well-defined time, and that is the defined time in the Sunnah. When the husband has the wife in the household course, what are the benefits of the, child, the child's growth and perspective of life? Well, when the husband helps, the, uh, helps his wife, first he, he allows her more time to spend with the children. And secondly, secondly, the children will see that his parents or her parents are cooperating in doing some things in life. And this is a very positive thing for the children to, su to see the help and concern and cooperation between their parents. And I'm sure there are other benefits for this, but this is what comes to my mind now. How can an older sibling teach a young, uh, unpracticing, rebellious, uh, 14 years old sister also, how does the young woman educate herself about raising her future children, inshallah, since she grew up in such a society herself? Okay, this is a good question from what appears to be a good, righteous, young sister. And uh, in, in response to the first part of her question, uh, I would say that yani, the, the rebellious younger sister may be uh, raised the way that we discussed earlier. She, she was not, her training did not start from the age of seven. And the parents waited too long for, to start training her. And maybe this happened to the other sister herself. But maybe Allah Azawajal guided her and protected her, preserved her, so that she was able to see the truth. So now in regard to her sister, who is rebellious as usually the teenagers are in our time, though they were not like that in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, but we know because of what the, our modern times, our society inspires them in this time of wrong beliefs and wrong ideas, so we know deviation among them, in the, in, in, uh, especially in their teenage years. So what you can do is, and all you can do actually is keep advising her. And if she finds, if you find that the advice coming from a sister may not be helpful, maybe you need to bring somebody from outside the house to provide the advice. Some other friend of, some good friend of yours who can provide advice to her, insha'Allah, in a nice, simple, and indirect way. Maybe if she falls in love with that person, with that other woman, that, uh, that other sister that you bring with you, and yani she de develops a strong attachment to her, then she will take everything from her. But try things like that, so that you do not, she do, doesn't feel that she is challenged when she is trying to be most uh, rebellious. How to educate yourself about raising your children in the future? Uh, 
by, by seeking the knowledge of Islam. Really, I mean, the best education is to educate yourself in Islam based on the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah. And that means you have to, to do a lot of effort to yourself to seek the proper ed education from, from the available books, because not all books are good, from available recordings, whether you download them from the internet or you buy them from bookstores, again, you have to make sure that they are good and clean and based upon قال الله قال رسوله. Yani, they should be based on correct evidence from the Quran and from the Sunnah. When the speaker speaks, he should say, he should support what he says with a statement from the Quran or statements from the Sunnah. Then you would have some kind of confidence that such a speaker is yani, well-founded. His statements are well-founded. And then, of course, you can benefit from the advice of the more knowledgeable people in your society, in your community. Uh, whether they are sisters or brothers, that you can ask them in, uh, with an intermediacy if you do not want to ask them directly. So these are some guidelines in this regard. And may Allah Azza wa help you in your noble quest. Bringing up children the right way is the responsibility of both parents. What would you say uh, where one parent is trying best to raise children uh, correctly and the other parent does, does the opposite? What advice would you give to the righteous parent? Well, I would advise her to keep doing what she's doing if she's a woman and, you know, I say her because you know, some of the experiences I have is with the mother being good and the father being uh, not righteous or not practicing of Islam. There could be, it could be, you can you know, expect, you know, there's a chance that it is the other way around. So I advise you to keep doing what you are doing. Allah Azawajal will give you a double reward for the extra effort that you are putting to يعني, remove some of the harm that the children are receiving by way of their father, who is disobedient to Allah Azawajal. And maybe, on the long run, the father himself will take heed when he sees how persistent you are in uh, يعني, raising the children and implementing Allah's commands in their regard. And yeah, seek help from some people in the community. Maybe they can provide some advice to the other spouse, spouse so that he will also yeah, shape up a little bit and correct himself. Allahu Akbar. My question is, my question is quality of having a few, two to three kids and raising them well Islamically, as opposed to quantity of having many kids and they being led astray. What are your thoughts? Okay. Uh, my answer uh, is actually contained in one of my books, and I hope that I'll be finished with the new edition very soon, inshallah, which is uh, Birth Prevention in Islam or an Islamic perspective regarding uh, birth prevention. Uh, the question is, is it better to have two, or three, two to three children or much more? And first of all, remember that the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to marry a woman who can give us as many children as possible so that we can Increase the number of the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad The number of righteous people. Now in your question, you are saying two to three children. And raising them well, in a quality way. And my question is, what do you mean by quality? What do you mean by quality? If you mean raising them so that they will be, and you can spend enough money to 
to, to give them good schooling and so on, then as we explained earlier, this is not what quality is. Quality is to raise them correctly according to Islam. And if quality you mean to raise them according, yani as righteous Muslims, my answer is how can you guarantee that the two or three children, any of them will be righteous, no matter how much effort you put. Yani maybe the first two or three children will, be, will end up being bad, and then if you have ten children after that, all the other seven will be good. So we cannot guarantee which children will be good and which children will be bad. Therefore, we have to do as Allah Azawajal commanded us and His Prophet commanded. To have as many children as, as we can. And then, you know, the, the all, we, we put the effort to raising them according to Islam. And you will see that the older children will help you raise the younger children. So by the time... Let's say you have 10 children, which is, you know, uh, an exceptional case. Women usually will have, yani if they are uh, the fertile kind of woman, in our time, they will have five, six, seven, eight, maybe no more than eight. Let's say she has eight. And let's say that they are spaced by two years each. Then, by the time she gives birth to the last one, the first one would be, how many years? Two times uh, seven, 14 years old. By the time she gives birth to the last, the first is 14. Okay? So by the time the last is starting to, to understand what's going around him in the world, the, the, the first one is already past his puberty or her puberty. So he is a grown man or woman. And he will be a great help for you in raising the younger ones. Not only him, also the ones who are the second and the third, maybe, and even the fourth. So I'm saying kids help raise each other. And those who came from large families like myself, we know that. We know that the older always help raising the younger. I remember my youngest brother, who is my, the seventh in the family, he used to say, uh, he once, you know, was telling my father, he said, he was very young at that time, he was like three years old. He said, uh, uh, what? He said, I do, I, do not, I, I do not like to listen to you, I like to listen to my brother Muhammad. Because, because, when I do something wrong, well, sometimes you hit me whether I, when I do something wrong or right. It doesn't matter. But my brother Muhammad only hits me if I do something wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was like three years old. Yani, and until now, yani, we, yani, I feel to him like, a, like a, a son of mine. Even though, you know, the, the difference in age between us is not that. Yani, it's like 13 years maybe. So what I mean is that really the older, the older children can be of great help to the parents. So let the parents not worry about raising their younger children if they have too many children, because they will have help. Okay? And they cannot guarantee that the few children they have will live afterwards, or that even if they live, they will be righteous. Okay. Wallahu alam. Please explain the three, three stages of raising a child. Example, 0 to 7 years, 7 to 14, 14 to 21. Well, as, we talk, as I said earlier, in Islam, uh, the stages are not like that. In Islam, the stages is 0 to 7. That is one, you do things to encourage children to do. Yani you, you guide them in such a way to encourage them without even commanding them to do anything. And then from 7 to 10 is the time when you will be ordering them. Do this, do not do that, do this, do not do that. After 10, you enforce that on them. So that is the, the third stage is from 10 till puberty. And after puberty, in the scale of Islam, they are not children anymore. They are, they are responsible grown-up people. 
It's true they are in their teenage years still, but they are fully responsible before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from that on, as long as you can enforce things on them, you do that. You know, as long as you have the power over them, you exercise that power to guide them. But after that, and this depends on the child, it varies from one child to the other, all you can do is advise them. What are you going to do? Keep fighting with them and spilling blood or something? You cannot do that. So you advise them, and if they listen, alhamdulillah, if they do not listen, yani depending on the thing that they are not listening in, you take whatever measure that is required after that, whether it is, you know, to uh, ask, yani, uh, yani it, it could be a major thing. Like if they, for example, uh, end up being using drugs and alcohol and make, committing other major sins, then in that case, maybe you want to consider even that they do not stay in your house. Yani, dry them out of your house. If you, especially when you have done all what is in your capacity when they were little, and they end up being totally disobedient to Allah, and not only that, destructive in their behavior towards the other members of the family. So in that case, you, you may need to take uh, extreme measures in their regard. Otherwise, sometimes advice is good enough. If they listen, alhamdulillah, if they don't listen, you keep advising them until, inshallah, you hope one day they will understand and see the truth. When a woman has her menses, can she still be teaching the, her children Quran? I explained in my book, Worship During Menses, that this, th there is no clear, strong evidence preventing a woman in menses from reading the Quran, touching the Mus'haf, or teaching it, or entering the masjid. So you can do all of these things, even if you are in your menses, even though most of the ulama say, no, don't do it. But this is one of the cases where the minority of the ulama are more correct than the majority. And Islam is not a religion of voting. And we do not take the truth by voting. We take the truth by evidence. And if you want to understand this issue very well, go to my book, Worship During Menses. And it is, it is available here, alhamdulillah. Uh, what do you think of Sigmund Freud's theories on children? I think that it is nonsense. We take our theories from the book of Allah and the sunnah of his prophet sallallahu If I done everything to make my children obey me but they don't listen, do I have to give up upon them? As I said earlier, depending on their age, and depending on the thing in which they uh, do not listen to you or do not obey you. My question is in regard to raising daughters and hijab. I believe Islam states that girls are to wear hijab at the age of puberty. Is it necessary to get them to wear it before? We already covered this. You should start training them from seven. And by 10, they should wear hijab and never remove it. By the age of 10. Okay? So from 7, you can let them put it on and off, on and off. But by 10, khalas. They are used to it enough that, because you do not want puberty to come when they are not used to it, it would be too late by then. What are the ways to explain to our teenager, teenager children who are already engaged in TV and internet that this has to be stopped? Do we straight away stop the TV and internet? That's, that's a hard question. And I tell you what the answer of a non-Muslim was to this. And I was reading on the internet, children and TV, and there was a question like this that he was saying, one of the educators was saying that you need to limit the uh, TV times for your children. If, if you cannot trash the TV, he said, then at least control it.
to one hour a day. And, uh, and he said, people ask him, mothers and fathers, how, how can we do this? And his answer is, that's your job as parents. And you are the parents, and you know how to deal with your kids. So find a way. If you know that this is your job, your obligation, your responsibility, then find a way. If they are, yani how are you going to remove the TV from their room? And many kids have TVs in their room. Yani more than one third of the American kids have TVs in their room from the age of less than 10, 8 or 7 or whatever. So how are you going to pull the TV out of their room? It's not easy. But yani as we said in regard to other things in the training of the children, you have to a reason with them and at the same time if you have the, fo- the ability to enforce things enforce them if you do not reason advise and exercise your power as being you know uh, which is sometimes people this is the only way they understand I am the one who provides for you I'm the one who pays for this I want to pull my support so give me back the TV something like this but you know you have to deal with these matters with a lot of wisdom and consideration especially when the kids have grown uh, older to the age where you have let them loose for so many years and then now all of a sudden you want to change things around so that definitely is not easy maybe if you can get some help external help to teach them and educate them and let them see the problems of TV and of uncontrolled internet, then maybe you'll find that they will develop an initiative from themselves so that they will be help they help you they will help you control them in this regard. Okay, we, we have to stop you. We still have so many questions, but as I said we have to cut it short tonight because uh, of various reasons and I have to travel early tomorrow inshallah so there are a few questions left and I'm hoping that whatever we discussed so far or whatever questions we answered will also have impact on the other questions will be able, will be also answers to most of the other questions so with this we close subhanakallahu wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik